Greetings friends, welcome. Today we're looking at customizing the UI of web push notifications. Now, I've done a few videos on setting up and sending these. Uh, if you need a refresher on that, I'll put a link to the video here. We're gonna be jumping straight into actually customizing the UI, so not so much on that, all of that setup beforehand, kind of assuming you already know about that. So what we'll be looking at is how to set things on there, like the title, the body, uh, the image, the icon, any buttons, and things like how long it will stay visible for. Uh, before we do though, uh, if you sign yourself enjoying the video, feel free to click that subscribe below, change the alert icon to all, and you'll get updates for future videos. Right, so I'm gonna do some setup here just so that we can send notifications in Chrome to demonstrate this. Uh, I'll put a timestamp if you just wanna skip this bit if you know how to do that, but otherwise we'll just jump through that quickly. It'll only take a second. So we're gonna have a web page here and we just need to enable notifications. We're gonna need a service worker um, to allow us to handle them. So we'll have navigate service worker register and we'll just create something called service worker JS there. Uh, my script needs to be a module. And then we just need to allow permissions so we can have a notification dot request permission. Uh, and that's all we need on that page there, I think. Um, and then we can go into our service worker. I just want to do one quick setup on that as well. Just want to make sure that we um, have skip waiting set. So we can have self dot skip waiting. This just means every time we change a service worker, it'll automatically update. So that will save us a bit of messing around. And then we'll need uh, an event to actually display these messages. So we'll have a push event. And that will take our payload. So this would all be set up elsewhere and the data will be sent to us, uh, but we'll simulate it in here. Uh, and we will display that event in a wait until and it will be self dot registration show notification so let's just put a test there at the moment so with that set up there we should be able to get a quick uh, example of that running if i open this up close those ones get the dev tools up we'll put that over there uh, right, so down in the console, no errors. So our service worker should be registered. We come into the application in DevTools. You can see that it's activated. And then in push here, I'm gonna add some demo data. So let's have, I'm gonna do this based on say a credit card. So we'll have Q bank say low rate. Uh, well, I want a title for our push which can be um, rate updated. Then what we'll have, maybe we'll have a new value and that can be 10 bucks. And then we'll pass a URL as well. And see if I can grab that. So that's the page we might want to allow the user to go to as well. All right, hopefully that's some good data. If I click push on here now, you can see that, oh, it's behind me. All right, I'm gonna move me because it's always gonna come up down this bottom right hand side. Uh, so I'm gonna put me over here and there we go, I'm looking at it again, nice. Right, uh, let me do that again. So over here, I'm gonna click on push and that's gonna bring up our notification. So that's, that's uh, the push is being handled in our push event handler here and we are just doing uh, show notification. All right, so that is the basic thing that comes up if you just call show notification um, with the default setting there of the title. So how can we extend this? Right, we can create an options object and pass that in. Uh, let's go 
full screen here. Um, so rather than just rather than passing the title there, we're going to want to pass it um, explicitly. Now that data that that we looked at on push, if I come back here. Um, I'm going to make it smaller so I can get it side by side. So this data in here, this JSON, is what we're going to want to be able to show in a nice way on that notification. Um, so that comes in on the parameter here. So we can grab that. So let's do, um, let's call it our payload, and it's going to be off a data object, and then we can turn that into JSON as well. So if we do e.data.json, we should now have this information here. I'm going to paste that into the web page so we can see it maybe. Um, hopefully up there. Right, yeah, so this is our JSON that we're sending. Um, am I missing a column on the end? I think I probably am. Oops. Like so. URL. So, okay. Um, and so we can grab that with e.data.json and we've got it in our payload here. So rather than just hard coding the title there, we can now say payload and grab the title. If I just quickly save that one off and Give that a push. I am missing that one there. Okay, we'll give that another push. Oops, I'm clicking on sync. All right, so now we're getting rate updated down here. So that's come from this part of the JSON. Yeah, the title part title rate updated okay so we can set the title uh what else can we do well as i said we can create a, an options object so let's do a const options and in here we can set quite a few things we can set the body let's start with the body and we'll what will we say? Um, so this is a credit card being updated. The title, I said rate update. Now we want to say what the card is. So let's have um, the payload again. And put the card name in here. So we can say that card. Uh, new fee is. And then we're passing that as well. So we've got payload. And we had new value, I think we called it, didn't we? New value of ten dollars. All right. So if I save that off and now pass that into our show notification as the second parameter, so we pass the options object that we created in here. If I give that a push now, we can see we're getting rate updated and Kiwi Bank low rate new fee ten dollars. So we've got a title. And we've got the body set there as well. Alrighty. What else can we set in here? Well, we can do, uh, and you notice actually, because we're going to come back to that, that that disappeared all by itself. We're going to change that to make it persist at some point also. Um, so next thing we can change to make this look a little nicer is an icon. We can put an icon on it. So we have a, in our options object, we can specify an icon. And we'll say card.com. Uh, web P. Now I'm going to go and grab uh, that card. So let's just go into here, grab this image, and we'll place it straight in there as card. We can get rid of that. All right, so I've got that saved. So I should now be able to say, um, I shouldn't have to do anything actually, we'll just put that on. So if I do push now with the icon specified, all right, you can see we're getting our picture down here. So we've got an icon, we can 
sets the title and we can set the body. Um, what else can we do in options? We can actually specify some interactivity now as well. So on the JSON that we're sending, I've got a URL on here. So it'd be nice that the user could click on this and go to that URL. Um, if, I, if I push at the moment, when we click on it, it just uh, closes the notification, no handler, but we can add a handler there. So let's do self.add event listener and we'll have notification click. And again, this will take a parameter and we want to get hold of it similar as we did in push. So let's, let's call it payload again. Uh, and this time it's on e dot notification dot data. Uh, and where does this notification data come? It's also coming from our options. So we need to go on here and add uh, add the data. And we're going to want to add a URL. And it will be our payload URL. Like so. Um, so when we click, we can get hold of that now. And we could then just ask, we could then just simply open the window. We can do clients.open a window and do payload URL. Um, so if I do a push now over here and click on here, it actually opens up that window for us. Uh, we might want to make that a little bit more obvious rather than just clicking on it and going to that page. You might not necessarily want to do that. So we can actually add buttons on here in our options as well. So we, we can add uh, the icon, the body, and we can add um, some buttons. Now they come under the actions object here. So we have an actions and it's an array. So we can have one or more of these. It depends what uh, your devices, if you're on desktop or mobile, it might be a different number of buttons you can have. On desktop, we can have two here. So I can create an action and we'll, and we'll say, we'll call it view and you can give it a title as well. Um, and so we'll just give that a, a view with a capital V there. Um, so what we can do once we've specified that, that will, that will make the button appear. If I do push now, you can see we get the view button down here. Um, but we click on it and it's just coming into notification click and still just just showing it by default we want to change it so that it only shows it if you click view so back in here we can detect that because um, we can look up the action title so if e dot action is view then we want to open the page so i save that off now and if i push again now if I click on the, just the whole notification, nothing's happening. Uh, if I click on the view button, we're now getting the page coming up. So it's coming into this event handler based on the action um, on that button specified there. Uh, and we can add another button there now, maybe just to say close rather than clicking on it. So that's a bit more obvious as well. So in here, I could do um, action and the action will be close and we'll give it a title of close. And so just by clicking on there, it comes into notification click and closes it. So we don't actually need to do anything in here now. It should just handle that for us. Um, so I do a push, click on view, brings it up. Do a push, click on close, close the notification for us. Um, so if we click on our push here now, you can see that this stays for a certain amount of time and then it automatically disappears, but we can tailor that as well. You might want it to persist. Um, so on our options as well, we can say uh, require interaction and we can set that to true. Uh, save that off. And when I push now, um, it will stay until we click on one of those buttons. So whether it's the default close up here or the view or the close, it's not going to disappear immediately like I did before. Um, 
as soon as we add require interaction. So looking at this now, it looks a lot better than the um, the standard show notification where you've just got a title. So you can you can certainly customize it, make it look a lot more professional. And and those are the kind of things you can do in here. So we basically need to have this options object. You can set up your icon. You can set up the body. Um, you can then send data that has been received on web push to your notification click and use that in there to open um, additional windows um, and we can add the buttons on there as well all right there you go a little overview of customizing the the ui on web push notifications hope that was interesting uh, if you liked it give me a thumbs up a thumbs down if not uh, don't forget to subscribe and i'll catch you next time bye